All right, welcome to Six Scale, everybody. It's February 3rd. A link to the document notes in the chat. Um, please add yourself as an attendee, please. Um, all right, let's get started with the agenda. So a um, few items for today. Um, want to review um, the performance periodic job results because we're starting to see a lot more information now that um, more information that should be able to enable us to add thresholds. So that's really exciting. So let me see, let me open a few of these. Um, and we're gonna do a little quick look over these. All right, let's start with the first one here. So, um, okay, so this is after the changes with the primer added, the primer VM. So this looks really good. We're So we're starting to get the, and much more accurate create pods count. That looks really good. 102, also really good. 108. Yeah, those all look really good. So um, this is awesome. And then uh, this too, like we're, we're so we're getting this info now. Um, all right, so that's, that's really good. So the, another, a lot of really important things about this is that I think this gives me a lot more confidence in these verbs. So, I mean, maybe we should talk about them, like what we see that's sort of strange here in this list, like, um, do you see the delete? What's that? The, the delete? delete? No. So because Marcelo, we run because now we're running the job in the um we're doing it before the delete. We're running the job and then we're waiting and then the delete gets run after the test completes. So it's way after the metrics have been scraped. Oh, okay. We could do we we could do a, a delete, but we would need to do it as part of the test now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's interesting in here, like, so what's what I think is really good is this. This is really good. So we're like, we're close to 100 on the patching VM VMIs. That's awesome. Like, fairly close to the creates. That's pretty good. This one's, I don't know what this is, 650, 645. This might just be picking up some other stuff. I don't know. I'm not sure what this is grabbing. But this um, is really a this is really a get on a node which we should see here. Yeah, we're gr we're grabbing the the HTTP request counts during a yeah. period of time when we're doing the creates like of hundred VMs. So yeah, and there's no there shouldn't be any other VMs running. Yeah, I mean as we can see here. So yeah, I mean this is get. I don't know what endpoints, or no, sorry, we're looking at this one. Get nodes count. Yeah, so this is get on a. Uh, is no. it is this is this virt handler or is it virt controller? Yeah. Uh, Maybe yeah. Any of them. I think we do it like this. We do okay. by controller handler and okay, operator okay. and API. So for, for handlers it can make sense. For handlers uh do hard beating on the node. So they get it. I see. They did input. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. So during this time, this is about roughly how many we saw. Okay. Right, it's not it's not per second. It would be nice also to see the rate, because you know if it's is if it's doing too much get nodes yeah. per second, yeah. yeah, it will be. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and I think it's not doing it that often actually to get. I'll just check it while you continue. Yeah, no, that's um, I I don't think I think it's okay. Like I I I'm just trying to pick out some high numbers in here, like. Mm -hmm. um update endpoints i don't what about this one um what what, what endpoint would we update it here uh that's i think gonna be that that's no lead election would be config map endpoints interesting and there's this one too so here okay, we patch so we do a lot of patch so we do 
pretty much a one-to-one -one patch to VMIs. That's cool. We do a lot of updates. So we do roughly yeah. eight to one. Yeah, this is interesting. I also see in my performance test, like, you know, eight updates for, well, I didn't, I didn't see this, you know, this, these numbers, but eight updates per VMI, it seems to be too much. I'm not sure. We have a lot, we have diff, we have until it reaches running, you mean, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think this is, this can be pretty accurate. We have a lot of sub stages, which we are reflecting in the VMI status, like when the pod, gets, yeah. so when the pod gets created, oh, when right. the pod's, pod is scheduled, when it is running. Right? I was so confusing with patch. Yeah, updates make sense. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, so this one. No, yeah, updates makes makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah, so that would be like, um, yeah, so like every time we change its phase, right? Would be so we should expect at least uh, what is it? Would be like four, four or five. What is it? So four with like pending scheduling. Oh, this is on for phase, but it also has conditions. Yeah. So yeah, it's more than this. Yeah, exactly. Eight sounds reasonable. I wouldn't yeah, have really, been surprised yeah. if you would have said 12. I would yeah. Yeah, also not have been surprised. <laughs> okay. It's tough to correlate it directly to all the different fields because a lot of fields are updated at the same time. So you might hit running and have some conditions set at the same time, for example. And then you might have some conditions that get set independently of any of the phases and it's really tough. Okay. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to quantify and see if like anything stuck out. So, okay. I mean, I guess... So yeah, if eight sounds reasonable to people. I mean, does anything in this list sound unreasonable? Sure I guess the endpoints I mean, updates can't. What well, the endpoints updates are? I'm not sure. That's oh. for uh, leader election. Is it? I thought it's based on config maps, but when it endpoints. I think we're using endpoints, but okay, great. Then yeah, that would have been missing. Okay. I guess sounds good. Okay, so about a two to one for those. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's okay. And then uh, here's the get endpoints, but roughly it's yeah. not, this one's not it makes quite sense. It's a leader yeah. election, it makes absolute sense. And it's independent yeah. of, of the, this is just a coincidence that it's, that it's kind of half of the nodes count. It's just a coincidence. Yeah. When it's leader election. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I think it looks pretty, pretty good. I think all those, all those verbs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Doesn't look like any real outlier. Really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. How about um, thresholds? Has that been discussed yet? Uh, creating no, those now. I have. Oh, so uh, that's where I was going. So I was gonna. So this part. So we can look at a few of these. Uh, let's see here. So I just pulled up three randoms. So we've got thirty-seven on the fifty. 35 on a 50, 30 on a 50, 37, 35, 30. Okay. And that's roughly like a 10% range or so in variation. Let's see, what about this one? 58, 56, 48. Yeah. P95 is something we could probably use. I would not use P99. That's like 1% yeah. worst case. But P95, it seems like if we take, so the highest one we got was 58. If we added like 50% to that, uh, so that's, that's 60 seconds, mm -hmm. maybe um, maybe 90 seconds as a threshold. If we ever give above 90 seconds, we did something terribly wrong. Yeah. Yeah, we're kind of hovering yeah. in that right around the under under a minute here for the hundred. Yeah. Okay. And then right around under forty for the for the P fifty. If it seems like we should be able to get that consistently lower than a minute. Yeah. So one of one of the things about ephemeral virtual machines here is that we should have already synced the image, right? So the um, 
I guess it depends on what image we're using. I'm trying to think of uh, if um, there's any case where we are pulling the image to nodes first, uh, the uh, actual boot image. Because if we're doing that, yeah, then I could see why, like, layer. so the first one on every node would be the outlier there. Mm -hmm. It would take an extra Can amount you... of time to pull the image. Is this, this a single cluster, node? Right? No, no, this is from the, um, this is from the periodic job. But isn't it running on Marcello's cluster now? Or oh, I don't know. Justin's here. Is it, it Marcello? Where is this running? No, this is this is running in the in the workload no cluster. Oh, just Kubernetes. Yeah. Normally. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Then the, the images should be pre-synced. As long as we're using one of the pre-synced ones, let's do, let's double check just to make sure we're not yeah. doing anything. I, uh, I can look real quick. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's using the image that it's upload uh, when you do cluster up. Okay, so probably just the serious one, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's not using from, from Quay, yeah. It's not, not downloading the image. If it's using that one, then it's pre-sync to all nodes, yeah. How many, uh, how many nodes? Is, is this just one node? Two nodes. It's a serious image. Two nodes, okay. see okay yeah, yeah so i have the other job running the performance cluster but um it's actually uh not running right now um i actually create a pr to f because the image was using um you know what was missing goal just something very simple you know was just missing goal um, I have a PR fixing that, but it wasn't merged yet. So um, when we have this merge, we can see the 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 job running the performance cluster. So. Okay. So with the performance cluster, this is like it's totally it's totally different than this where this is running, right? It's its own dedicated one. Yeah. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so All right. using yeah, P95 and so on sounds great. And in addition, we can probably add some. What would also work on Kubernetes CI good is probably also some expectations regarding to the counts, to REST calls and so on. But on the other hand, it changes pretty often when you do pull requests. Yeah. Maybe we want to see that. Maybe it's exactly no, what we want to see. It, it is. I, I agree with you. Um, like for, I completely agree because this is like, I, I think this is, so the, I would say this is going to help us a lot with performance. And then this is going to impact, I'd say scale, because when we, I mean, the number of verbs that we do, right, is going to affect Kubernetes. So we should be conscious of this. I mean, I think, um, I mean, I don't know, what should we pick out of here? I mean, I would expect like, this one looks pretty good. Like patching virtual machines, this should always be one-to-one, -one, I think. Looks like it from a pretty it close because like it's patching the um shoot what's it patching the ready status the ready condition i think right from the from the pod right is that what it was it's syncing something from yeah we're not guaranteed it's one-to-one -one. uh mm, that's not but it seems to be in this case pretty much yeah <laughs> yeah okay so maybe not like so maybe what should we so what would be like a case where it's not one-to-one? -one? I mean, that's just like, well, so if like, for, for instance, like this is an estimate. If it's not one-to-one, -one, like let's say it was 200, that means that we had to, that means they all failed whatever the condition was yeah. or whatever that, right? I think yeah. that's, for that seems like a problem, right? Yeah, for that metric, we could just double it and say, yeah, for this one, yeah. And say, if, we, if it doubles suddenly, then something which maybe of interesting ch interest changed. Yeah, we're specifically looking for loops here. So uh, something where if a if two controllers collide, then they're going to get in this competition, both trying to update an object at the same yeah. time, and, and maybe it eventually resolves itself. But that would result in several, like, mag, like double, or maybe even yeah. triple the number of uh, patches and updates. So I think patch and update to virtual machines are the ones that we 
most interested in from a scale perspective because that, that yep. multiplies with the number of virtual machines that we have or virtual machine instances that we have. Okay. I think so we, we have... can even be pretty close here and say for the patch it's two to one and for the update we could even say it should it must be below nine to one or ten to one. Because for as long as we can just change this number with a pull request when we see that it's legitimate that it goes up, right? Yeah. Or we can just change it. Um, uh, okay. I think maybe also the number of get and least. You know, maybe not the threshold, but something to analyze here. Because it will change, you know, number of get and list will change if it the the VM is running with PVCs or multiple NICs, things like that. Um but you know, we don't want to make for example get we have get endpoint, get nodes. Only that. That's for our uh, heartbeat. So the Git nodes is for the um, bird handler heartbeat. Wow, 600. Yeah, the, the, the time frame would be interesting on this one. This is uh, in, interpolated over five minutes. That's insane. So 100, just five minutes noted. Five minutes, that yeah. That's really weird. So this one. Can, can you see the other uh, runs? It okay, would indicate I'll... that we, for instance, have a get somewhere, get node somewhere in our VM create flow. That then could be this big, for instance. It looks like we're consistently at like, let's see, this kind of a weird, it's not really correlated, right? It's like six to one, almost seven to one. It's kind of strange, actually. So I guess like it's, so we're saying it's like maybe correlated with time. And maybe we, Is right so, from the bird handler or something. I'm just too, double checking our default heartbeat interval. So that's just that we know. Yeah, it looks like. Must be doing something. Well, it's five minutes. It's 100 per minute. So. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. And, uh, that doesn't look right. <laughs> no, no, but I think this is accurate because uh, everything else is accurate. Yeah, it, it, definitely something something wrong. M maybe it's failing, you know? It doesn't receiving the, it's failing and then it's trying to get like, like crazy, you know, the the result. But it, if, if it doesn't so get one, the nodes. Right now it's one minute. So from the two weird handlers, we should see only five times to 10 requests due to heartbeat. Whoa. Yeah, Dude, it's weird. Yeah, we got. So uh, I think again, things that I, I think I mentioned before, we need to give here also the code, you know, to understand, you know, which which requests were two hundred, you know, uh, uh, HTTP two hundred uh, code for response. And which ones has the 400 and 500 ones? Because we could see here in the get nodes if those ones are 400 and 500 uh, answers uh, code. We don't know which one failed and which yeah, one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess Marcelo is like, I maybe we can, I, I don't disagree with you. I guess this tells you me. You have like, Prometheus yeah. there, isn't it? Can, can you just? Check this. Yeah, I have to. Hold okay, on. it's not to running. Run a, yeah, it's fine. No, nah, it's not yeah. running. Yeah, it's not. It's also not. It's not. Yeah, it would have. It'd be like my local cluster. Yeah, I mean, I could try it if you want to, but um, I mean, I'll only do like ten VMs. But I, I think we we can extend it. You know, for requests that failed and requests that went through. You know, in here in the report. Yeah, like I see here, so we, we patch the nodes roughly uh, kind of at the rate that you just said, Roman. I mean, it's fairly close, so it's 12. It's yeah, but something 15. is really getting the node too often. This is not right. The patch seems yeah. okay, right? But yeah, yep. the patch is yeah. exactly what I would expect. Yeah. I think it's our node labeler. 
uh, we have a controller that it's on every and as, yeah, and I see that the device plugins also have nested functions where they do get, so there may be something to yeah, okay. So this one we will need to investigate. Mm -hmm. Great. 650 range. Okay. I, so back to what you were saying, Marcelo, about the list. I, I agree with you about the, these are good safeguards. Like, um, because oh, well, yeah. we wouldn't we right this is like this is good like we like the these can be expensive that sounds that's really good we only doing one i mean this seems i wonder i wonder if this it would be nice to find a way to correlate this like i wonder if this is like i don't know what this would be when we're list um i mean maybe it's uh well, the only one i could think of here it's like we ran the job once like what we created a role or something or like we checked something on a service account or what what would these be we checked the namespace once i don't see the tie into this let's see some of the others oh i don't even yeah. see them here actually we also oh, here's one of them you know things that when we have like many questions like that um, we don't know also who is asking, you know, actually uh, requesting that, you know, is it right. handler, with controller, you know, I think once we have this, we need to have like another test and get, you know, this per component and also, as I mentioned, per it failed or not, you know, or went through the request and then we can just please. Yeah, I don't we'll, even see it. I don't we even will see have the, it uh, in the performance cluster anyway, because we will have the dashboard. Yeah. So okay. I, I will try to make this PR working next week. So then we can we can like look that. Okay. I don't even see um I don't even see these in the other ones. I only see that one, only the list service monitors, which I don't know what I don't know what that is. And then there's no list here. I, um, I'm, I'm guessing it's there. It's just I'm missing. I mean, like that's probably a small window to like to capture this because I bet it's literally happening once, probably right at the start of the test, and we have to get the the data at the right point in time to see it with the interpolation. It's possible we just missed it, but it. I think at least it's it's pretty insignificant though you would see i guess maybe what this isn't and maybe it's not something we care about if if we see like more of this and we see like more of these show up then i may be a little more concerned but yeah i don't think we need to worry about that all right i'm, I'm surprised that it doesn't lease anything so it's yeah what it's, do you mean you're surprised like you don't see more i don't I understand like, because I was expecting, you know, some least, you know, um, for example, somewhere listing a VMI, and then this wouldn't be you know, not good, you know, you know, to find those kind of things, you know. Well, it's, it's good. I mean, it's good that there aren't any, you know. Like this is. I wonder what's doing this, but I, it's, it's pretty insignificant. Whatever is doing it. Yeah, it's pretty good actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. This looks like from the word operator or something. Yeah, okay. I think that's pretty good. And then, uh, so I think these seem pretty good. So we have, we can do thresholds around these, these right here, and I'll get you all these, and then investigate this one, which is a little, little unclear. Okay, cool. All right, that's good. Good, we're getting some data from that. Okay, well, let's go to the second bullet point. Um, Roman, I'm glad you're here today. I, I heard you mention this in the community call um, because I think this is going to actually be important for our jobs and using the serial tag because we don't want any of them running in parallel or we're going to get muddy results. Yeah. You definitely have tests which just on the describe or something, just put a serial there. You don't have to put it to each it or so, just on the global describe set of serial. Okay. And everything's good. But I think you're not. Are you executing the tests through hack func test? Um, we're no. It's it's hack perf test. 
Ja, okay, ja, dann it doesn't, then hack funk test is only real, only hack funk test makes sense out of the serial tag. So if you're just running it out of that, you're not affected, but it may still be good just to indicate okay. that they're supposed to be run in serial fashions. But you should not be affected. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, well, let's go to then the third bullet point. We'll go to PRs. So uh, this is one, this is a follow-up to the um, the PR from last time where I hard-coded the five-minute range vector. So this is, um, what I wanted to do here is, uh, let me um, go to that PR from last time because I have a, this is the one. Here we go. I think I had it at the bottom. So the follow-up for this I wanted to do is that like um, I wanted to establish a relationship between the range vector and the Prometheus scrape interval because they're they're absolutely related. Like I did a bunch of testing on this, and it's this is how the interpolation is is determined and how the, the values and get set. Um, the other one is that like we need to monitor the range vector and make sure that it's um, that it's the right length based on the test duration. Um, you know, if it's too short, um, we should extend it or we're gonna miss data. If it's too long, um, we need to be cautious of that as well. Um, so there's, there's a few things that, that I wanted to capture and that's what I went through with this. And so the relationship that I established with the range vector is a 10X relationship between the range vector and the Prometheus scrape interval. I set Prometheus scrape interval to be 30 seconds as a, as a global variable there. Um, I couldn't, I thought about trying to look up the Prometheus scrape interval, but it's actually, I didn't think that was a good idea. Like, but I, I gave the user the ability to set this if they want to, but it's hard coded to 30 seconds. That's what our tests are. So 10 X to that comes at the five minutes, which is what we're using. Uh, 10 X seemed reasonable because of, you know, what we were seeing with the results from the five minute um, range vector time gave us reasonable interp interpolation metrics um, for increase. So um, that's why I went with that. And then, um, like I said, the other one was that the setting the range vector to be close um, to the duration. Uh, and so basically what I want, uh, I wish I had my, some actual data here, but basically what I want to do, um, I think there's a graph here. I what I want to do is like, I want to get, See, I'll find a good one here. I want to get the, the I want us to, to run the audit kind of like right near the end of this test. Actually, you can see it right here. So the, this value right here, right, it's 22. And you can actually see it right on the end here. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's actually coming down kind of the end of this test because the, the, the primer test, whatever is, is running in front. So what I did was, is I actually increased this buffer. So I add a, a buffer between tests now of two Prometheus scrape intervals. So it's coming up to a minute by default to give us some time between tests. And then I want us to like scrape, right? One Prometheus interval backwards on the offset. So kind of somewhere in this area. So we land somewhere in that, in that one minute buffer and we don't come too close to the end of the test because there are like, if, if we, Oh, there we go. That's better. If we if we come too close to the end of the test, I mean the results can uh, the I mean, you kind of can see it like here. We they they kind of move a little bit. So I kind of bring it in to where like the results are fairly stable, kind of like you can see it here on this, like when they're fairly flat at these points where where I want to where I want to grab them. So kind of right near probably like if a five minute interpolation, it's like be like four and a half minutes is where I want to grab it for the most accurate results. So really the only changes is that it's like, it's just to make it so that when this, like when we, this is it's gonna change it based on the Prometheus scrape interval and, and the length of the test is really the, the gist of it. All right. Okay, um, other PRs that are open. I, I saw David, you had this one. Um, this is your fix to the VM pools. But I don't know if you had any comment on that, but I, I did do a review and then it looks okay to me. I think I just left one comment. Yeah, it's tedious. 
<laughs> That's the best way to describe it. I, I can talk about it, or all I did was change the hash function that was originally trying to determine if the pools template changes versus the uh, VM and VMI that we've actually deployed. So I'm comparing the, the hash of the pools template for a virtual machine compared to the hash that we've stored in the VM, the VMI, and that was wrong because my hash algorithm, uh, I don't think I have one that would ever work accurately if we ever add or modify a field on the VM or VMI spec. Uh, it would essentially just, after an updated kubevert, cause all this to be wrong. So I changed it to use this controller revision and I can compare the controller revisions against each other I'm using the exact same API version every time and it, it works. Uh, it's just really tedious. So that's all I changed. Cool. Okay. All right. And the third one, this is the, the SLOs document that I've talked about previously. I don't, I don't know what, I haven't seen many comments on this except from Marcelo. I mean, do people like, are people okay? Like mainly what I wanted to do with this, like I've said, is that um, to describe what we want to do with our testing and kind of get to where we want to go with like, um, I mean, Kubernetes has this SLOs document where they, they try to, you know, they have tested or confirmed uh, uh, things like that they, that's the lows they have for the platform. We could go that way as well. And I think kind of advertising it through our testing is the way we could do it. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of what I'm doing here with this uh, is kind of laying the groundwork for that. And then we need to implement the testing for it. I think it's a good idea. I just didn't get to look into it. I, was, I mean, in principle, expressing what we think from the test perspective that we're capable of doing is great when we describe it. Okay. All right. Have a look at that one. Okay. And then Marcelo, you had this one. Oh, yeah, cool. it's, it's merged. It's merged. So Uber now has the extension, extension to uh, create via or oh, Kubert object, VM, VMIs, and replica set, and wait for the, you know, the ready state. Um, and and collect some detailed uh, metrics, latency metrics. So from the VMIs, it's in the end, it's just create a map, a map, and get the timestamps for you know all the states from the when the VM and VMI is changing the states, and also the pod that is changing. So it it gets like a you know the time that the VM, for example, VM creates, then the VMI is created. Because I want, if the VM is creating the VMI, okay. Um, and then when the pod is created, the pod is initialized, the container is initialized, the pods are running, and the VM, VMI is running, the VM is ready. So it's cool. it gets all of this. So, yeah. Very nice. This we, one's we the example. Oh, good. Yes, I have. Oh, um, actually, I, I run several tests doing that in the, um, but it, it was um, in other nodes. I, I can send a picture about that later. Because also, That's great. It, it's some tests that I did. Um, I, okay, I did some tests that in the in the CI also. So I will, I will, I will share that later. So Marcel, Something. is this the is this the this is the burst test, right? That's what that's what's implemented as part it's of this. It's a burst, yeah. It's a burst test. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay, I'll just have to try it at some point on, on our internal clusters. I will present that in the Kubevert summit. So. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. How many? What? What do you mean? How many VMs? How many VMs have you have you tested with this? Uh, oh, eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Wow. Yeah. It it was a big test, but uh, I don't Do know. You know the I, results I, from that? 
<laughs> yeah, I don't know if I can share these results because oh, it was okay. with OpenShift. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. I think that's all we have. So for um, did we did did anyone get the answer to this? Are we using precinct images for this uh, for this job? I think someone sent from David the, said it was sent to us images. Yeah, yeah from there we put. From the web result, the results right now, yes, but on my Shellus cluster, I'm not sure if it gets precincts. Could, but could be. Okay. Um, so for follow up uh, on the no, on it's the, it's not. Oh. I'm uh, not using yeah I'm in the in the performance cluster. I'm not using this uh, image because it's you know it's a Kubernetes that it's already running there. And I'm not pushing the image. So the first the first image comes from the quay. And yeah, you, you see like some downloading time. So in the first VM that is being created. Okay. We we can maybe improve that. But yeah. Let's okay. put something to think about. Yeah. All right, all right. So for follow up on these, um, so I can I can take the action in here um, to put together thresholds. I'm going to do it for all of these. Basically, what we have here. Oh, this one's duplicate. So I'll do it based on these ratios. We can start. Uh, I'll start adding like a a fail pass fail based on what we see based, uh, on these thresholds. Okay, and then um, I'll create an issue for this one. Um, I'll just open it and attach it here, and then we can we'll do, we can do follow ups on this one, and see what people find about about this. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, everybody. I think that's all we have. Unless there's any more topics, go once, twice. Okay, all right, everyone. Thanks. Have a good day. Talk to you later. Have a good day. Thank bye. you. Bye bye.